we always do about this time. What up, bro? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? How's everybody doing today? Welcome to another episode of I Often Wonder. All right, it's all right. It's your boy Wildcard Mar in the building. That guy over there, Detroit Mail. What's good? Um, I hope you like like, like the piano in the background. All it, right, it plays so well. Uh, we had Stevie Wonder on that joint last week. He was right, right. He kept bumping into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Tearing up my furniture. Hey, Stevie ain't bring no guy with you. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Stevie? <laughs> As I can tell, the foolishness is about to begin. So Kicking let's get all my Kool-Aid. Let's get the, let's get the preliminary. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> let's get the preliminaries out the way because Mel is cutting up already. Um, I think it's the glasses. I think it that's what it glasses, is. Also. It might be the glasses. Um, going over to the website, www. I often wonder 19.com. And that is the website. You get all the information you need for, uh, uh, you know, every last platform that we are associated with, with the, I often wonder podcast and the right. ILW network right, right. and the Patreon is on there. Um, if you are feeling so kind and so, you know, generous in your soul, go ahead and drop some little nuggets on that Patreon. Right you feel me? Now. Right about now. <laughs> <laughs> um, help uh, Detroit Mail and myself offset some of these uh, expenses that right. it takes to build a media yeah, conglomerate. Man, tickets off. That we, tickets. Hey, man, this is oh, supposed to build bad. the network, oh, not, not paying your speed right tickets. Oh. No, 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 not the right <laughs> place to put the money, bro. No, no. You pay that with your money, dog. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not put some bail put. money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> In case stuff might happen. <laughs> no, no. Look, if you got, if you need bail money, we got bigger issues. Um, no, uh, no. The Patreon's on there for sure. Like I right, said, right. you're feeling real generous, and you so go ahead, drop a little nuggets in there. Right. Um, you can cop some of the merch. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, I'm rocking the I often wonder shirt. I got the logo, and then of course, Mel, Mel, Melly Mel is rocking some of that J. Edwin collection. That's on there as well, too. And the IOW Sports merch is on there as well. Right, right. You know, go get your IOW bird. Oh, <laughs> go get you one of them. Um, but no, uh, most importantly, in your respective app store. So if right. you got the uh, Google uh, Play Store for you, Google and Android and samsung users mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then the apple store for the apple and ios users right, right. everybody is available the iow network radio app where we have lots of great content over there podcasts from various people that do various podcasts like air right. paradoxica oh God, white great ball podcast. Great podcast. um I mean, L. Jeffrey Moore. Mm-hmm. I, of course, the I Off the Wonder podcast on right. there. The IW Sports is on there. Um, Love Cafe. Love Cafe with Vicky Esther. And then speaking of Vicky Esther, we have very something in common with our guests. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Right. Um, but I'm telling you, go get the apps. A lot of great content on there and great music. Um, mm-hmm. Talking about great music that makes you move and groove. Right, right. All that from various like independent. Move. And mainstream artists. I, we don't have no Dunda on there yet. So Kanye West fans. I've been y'all. listening to it. I ain't too impressed with Dunda. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> man, I buy that right away. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I haven't had a chance to uh, get into it yet. But when I do, I, I'll give my own uh, thoughts and opinion about it. But tell me what you think. Yeah. Uh, but without further ado, uh, like I said, we do have something in common with our guest today. Um, 
coming all the way from Mexico, our great guest, we have Mr. Miguel Flores. What's up, Miguel? Hey, how you doing, boys? Thank you so good, much for having good. me in. It's a real uh, pleasure to have you, uh, to be here with you guys. Um, damn, this is big. I mean, I don't know how you've somebody on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Miguel, real quick, um, give our audience uh, the name and where they can find your podcast at. Yes, sir. Th uh, thank you so much. Uh, the name of our show podcast is Pam El Podcast because it's in Spanish. Uh, we, you can find it on Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, uh, Amazon Music, Deezer, Spreaker. Oh, what else? We also have a, a very little tiny Facebook website, uh, well, Facebook page called Pam El Podcast. Okay. And also we have our Twitter, Instagram. It, we're starting. It's just it's something very, a little bit brand new. Well, considering uh, well, considering all the things that we can do here in Mexico, right. uh, we're, we're just a little small. But it's great to have, you know, to come here, spread the word, love for a lot of things. As you can see, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, a little bit of a... A wrestling fan, just a little bit. Mexican <laughs> wrestling is well, well, yeah. It was a nice show. You, yeah, I really recommend it. I'm a Bronco fan all the way from Mexico. Oh. City. Nobody, nobody <laughs> believes me, but well, yeah, right like, now I saw you, Casey Cab, and I'm like, Good. oh damn, this guy got a Chiefs fan. <laughs> you know I'm a <laughs> Chiefs fan, know, baby. He's you gonna know. be up in my ass like in ten years. <laughs> it, it's funny, Miguel, because right, right when I saw you move your head, I was like, is that a Bronco spinner? I was like, oh. Look <laughs> Oh, I was like, oh, I'm going to get him. And then, this, one, this one has a lot of value because it was time for some Broncos cheerleader girls that came here to an event in Mexico City. I was like, yeah. I have to be there. Okay, I may not have Terrell Davis signature or John Elway <laughs> or whoever, but hey, these girls have to sign up for me. It was like, I was standing there like for five or six hours out of uh, outside of the stores, uh, uh, sporting goods stores here in Mexico City. And I was right. so happy and pumped up and... But I was like 12 years old. Imagine that was 20 years ago. So this oh, thing is wow. old. <laughs> yeah. Mexico City is a beautiful city. Tell yeah. us about your city, man. Man, first of all, one of the biggest cities you will ever see in your life. Oh, wow. And I, I can tell you something. Maybe you saw just a little glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. If, uh, the, the people, the part that everybody remembers is uh, downtown. We call it Zocalo, Reforma. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little part of Insurgente that's pretty nice. But believe me, you go and see the other places, <laughs> blows your mind. Mm -hmm. I really recommend you to have a good party in Xochimilco. It's like this. Yeah, they, call the Mexican, uh, they, they call it the Mexican Venice. Oh, really? But you get wasted like in five minutes because all you get, <laughs> you go there is get drunk like crazy. And you're like, oh, man. <laughs> and then you're listening to the mariachis over there and you're singing, Yo sé bien que estoy afuera. But I don't know. <laughs> you, you get crazy out there, but it's real fun. Uh, you, if you want to come here in Mexico City, have your guy and give you a big tour, do, you will be amazed at all the things you can do here. I'm yeah. serious. Oh, wow. Hey, we're gonna have to set that up, and we can do like a joint podcast, and 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 see if we can do it like somewhere in in you know on a tour while we're oh, on yeah, with we you again. That, that would be dope. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. dope. Um, um, and, yes. and that that's COVID permitted. So, uh, uh, one of my first questions, uh, wanted I wanted to ask you, how exactly in the last year and a half has has COVID um, affected you guys down there in Mexico? Well, considering that, first of all, the vaccination was totally controlled by the government, we have to be, you, you, we just have to wait for for them to say, okay, right. the people from certain age can go to the places that we assign. We just have to wait. It's, um, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. in the U.S. was a little different. Private initiatives step up and said, if you want to get vaccinated, come to this place. I have a friend that actually went to Arizona. He lives in very close to the border. Mm -hmm. he, he had a chance of going to Arizona. He went to the Cardinal Stadium. Okay. He said, Dude, I just got it. It was like a two hour line, but because there was a lot of people out there, mm -hmm. but I got the vaccine. They told me, come here in the next two months. He went the next couple of months. He was already vaccinated when we oh, were wow. not even starting. So that's a little <laughs> detail that we have over here. It was a little bit slow, but well, little by little, it's coming. It's coming along. Okay. So that process has been been real behind, real slow. 
I want to think it's because they want to do it the most organized possible way, mm -hmm. considering that we're Mexicans. Organization is not exactly one of our strengths. <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes it's not, uh, we, we do things. So this is not the way we're supposed to do it. And maybe I, I'm just speaking just for talking and whatever. But yeah. <laughs> normally uh, we like to do things like, eh, don't worry, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and if something happens, we'll figure that out later. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it when we have to deal with it. Exactly. But when we had to deal with this thing with COVID, um, it was a little bit weird. But well, it was, right now, we're business are a little, little by little going back. The mm -hmm. restaurants are at most at 40% capacity, but at least okay. they're open right now. Mm -hmm. The movie theaters also 30% capacity, but at least they're open. Yeah. You know, every, and every, you go to a mall, restaurant or whatever. They take your temperature, the sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Please wear your mask at all time. Good to go, right? Okay. And okay. we try to keep ourselves, you know, our social distancing. And considering that this is not something is to be joking a lot here in Mexico, we like to joke about it a lot, but uh, we see the things <laughs> that it does. Right. Um, uh, for example, the other day I went with my daughter to a movie. Uh, we went to watch Space Jam before yeah. I got HBO Max, and then I saw Space Jam was already there. I was like, ah, oh, damn, I just wasted like $40 here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could have saved that money. Right, right. <laughs> if I, I just had to wait for a couple of weeks, and I was like, ah, oh, damn. Like, not again. So, the same happened with Mulan. The same happened with Black Widow. Oh, oh yeah. I, I got to finish watching that, too. Black Widow was like, good, though. Black yeah, I watched half of it. I got to finish watching it. Uh, you, I just be so uh, mesmerized by uh, Scarlett Johansson. I'd be like... Oh, uh, well. Are, are those butt cheeks I see? <laughs> don't surprise me. I mean, we talk about it in our podcast. It's like, well, what did you expect? The way they treated her? I would have done the same. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't but, know. Um, Ah, it was weird. <laughs> but yeah, that's the way we have to deal with it. It's just like here in Mexico, we like to do things in a certain way that we want, either if it's an adversity, mm -hmm. we want to give a good face to it. We want to face it the nice, uh, the best possible way. Because if we do it in a negative way or we have this vibe that doesn't work with anybody, right. uh, we're just going to mess it up our, uh, for ourselves. So it's like, okay, let's take the best out of this. Uh, for example, I started my own business right in the middle of the pandemic because okay. first of all, it was because I said, okay, nobody's hiring, but I have to do something, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and I decided to say, I just started my English school, something very small. Mm -hmm. But Oh, by the way, thank you for the advertising, uh, advertising time. Plus, education <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> also, uh, we're starting courses to learn Spanish, so if uh, if you want to be with the I guy, need that. Hey, I I'm need your here. Yo te enseño a hablar español, hermano. <laughs> Appreciate it. Gracias. Right. Gracias. Well, de nada, de nada, bro. De nada. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And we talk. started the business in the pandemic. So, well, so, so far, it's worked pretty well, fortunately. Mm -hmm. So, talk about, because, you know, a lot of times we talk about Mexico, especially from from this, this side of the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about Mexico, you know, especially when Trump was in office. Um, uh, <laughs> so that is the reason why they say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you hear a lot about war ass, uh, you know, and you hear a lot about the cartels and stuff like that. So someone on this side think, well, as soon as I go across the, if I go to Tijuana, I might get kidnapped, you know? Um, well, let me tell you something. I mean, it's a reality. I mean, we cannot deny it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't deny that the fact that there's the drug cartels handling things even in the highest levels. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, but everybody here in Mexico knows it. I mean, it's like, eh, mm -hmm. well, a drug dealer, the next guy is a, a bakery, the next guy is a shoe store. So mm -hmm. basically, it's not supposed to be this way, mm -hmm. but we got used to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Especially, we understand that certain parts of Mexico, but normally those are the parts that um, are a little bit far away from the big cities. Okay. You, despite what a, a lot of people think, mm -hmm. actually, the situation in Tijuana is a lot easier than everybody thinks. Okay. I mean, yes, 
the first reference or the first image or the first impression is the one that you always keep in your mind. Right. But actually, Tijuana has improved a little bit uh, compared to what it was like 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. Also, uh, Ciudad Juarez is also in a situation like that. I mean, little by little, but yeah. because people have learned just to stay out of trouble. Okay. okay. If you know that yeah. these guys mean problems, stay out of problems. I mean, <laughs> yeah. right. I, I don't I don't do anything to you. You don't do anything to me. Mm. You want to make a little business? Okay, we'll talk about it, but we can talk about it this in a civilized way, you know? Yeah, um, right. Because um especially because here in the media, uh, they also like to make things bigger. I guess that's okay. everywhere because mm -hmm. I heard it everywhere. Yeah, we deal and... we deal with it on this side of the wall too. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> I, can, I, guess I can see that. I mean, right, I right. saw that on a bunch of news. I mean, Fox News uh, doesn't oh, start God. repeating that crossing the wall is like going straight to hell. I mean, well, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you it's hear that a that lot. Bad. You know, you hear that a lot. And it's like, well, and I, I mean, I know because I have friends that's from Mexico, but right. I just wanted you to get it. So people that haven't heard that, you know, I had a friend, yeah. um, matter of fact, um, he he lived in Mexico, so he used to. Him and his wife met at Disney. She's she's Mexican and he's American, and right. they worked at Disney. And then he went and stayed in Mexico for about a year and a half, and then now they back here in the states. And I got like I said before, I dated a girl from uh, Social Mico, so ah. she used to, she used to tell me a lot of stuff about Mexico, and she says, "Oh, you need to come back here. You know, we can." Live like kings and queens, the money we make here and this and that. And oh, so, well, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of people that earns dollars mm -hmm. and spending pesos. Of course, the, the economies are way different in both right. countries. Man. I right. mean, <laughs> basically, you you win probably a thousand dollars a month. Of course, I'm just giving a number, right? But a thousand dollars, you would be living like a king, okay? At least. Above average in Mexico, okay. you would have okay. a very nice and decent life. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the differences in the economies and systems can be. Right. I mean, not right there. I mean, there's a reason why America is like the most powerful country in the world, and mm -hmm. we are like, hey, dude, please don't name, let me join the party, man. <laughs> please, I'm here. <laughs> but you know what? It, well, you hey, know, I'm your boy. I'm your boy, Mexico. <laughs> hey, I'm Mexico. Hey, we had our times. We had our times. <laughs> But you know what, Miguel? You know what's really interesting, though, that when you when people mention North America, they always talk about Canada and the United States, and they don't mention that Mexico is part of North America. You and we know. love to mention that we're part of North America. Yeah. <laughs> you always just think you always say Canada, United States, and people forget about Mexico is still part of North America. Yeah. You know. well, um, I, I I never said. Oh no, I said. You have to understand that geographically we're part mm -hmm. of North America, but culturally <laughs> we're part of Latin America. Well, it's just a geographic thing. Right. I mean, geographically, we're part of North America. I mean, well, it's it's a fact. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Economically, of course, maybe we look a lot more like Latin America and South America in general. Mm -hmm. <sighs> circumstances. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's our circumstances, and that's it. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, but it's a, one question I really wanted to ask is is what what as an outsider who's not American and and you see all the stuff on the news on, on what's going on in our crazy ass country <laughs> what what are your thoughts and feelings of, of America sometimes? Mm, well, actually, my thoughts is uh, very simple. Different circumstances, but at the end of the day, we're the same human beings. Okay. I mean, yes, I understand that circumstances in my country are a lot different than mm -hmm. in the United States. I get it. I mean, it's just pure common sense. Right. Yeah. But I also believe that sometimes the way we deal with it actually doesn't make us look like we're too separated or too different, you know? Right. Uh, for example, I remember the situation of the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. movement. Um, I... Ne I didn't understand why people didn't support it where, when the situation is like right in our faces. Mm -hmm. I remember that my daughter catched the video of George Floyd's situation mm -hmm. when he was uh, assaulted and, and murdered by a police officer and she mm -hmm. just started to cry. I was like, well, what, what, what do you explain that? She was like 10, 9, 10 years old. Oh, wow. And she started to cry. 
But mm -hmm. why he wasn't, and I remember her words, but he was not doing anything. He was just passing by. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with the cop? <laughs> How do you explain, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right, right. But I understand that we're, uh, there was a human being situation, mm -hmm. a person that made a mistake. Somebody paid for it, unfortunately. But I, I, uh, but I see that it happens a lot here too. I mean, yes. And that was my, and that was my next question. It, like, I'm pretty sure there has to be some type of instances that, you know, as a country, you, you guys deal with the same, same issues. Yeah, is um, we we deal with our our issues, of course, definitely. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we actually deal a lot, if we're talking about segregating, because it's um, something that we see a lot. Uh, people that are native Mexicans, I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, mm -hmm. that are directly descendants from Aztecs, from yeah. Maya, mm -hmm. from their people, uh, what we call Sierra Tarahumara, mm -hmm. uh, the place, the, the people that actually keeps the original traditions uh, before the Europeans came to the continent, you know, right? those people. And for some reason, I still don't understand a lot of people in our society in Mexico, especially the high class society, mm -hmm. still looks down at everybody, especially them. Mm -hmm. And not only because of the economical situation or yeah, social economical situation, mm -hmm. but also because of the of the color of the skin. It was like, well, technically speaking, it's not really that different. And everybody, th uh, for example, um, it happens to me, but in in the way that I would never expect it. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, I look super white compared to the rest of Mexican people. Right, right. And if I start giving a class, somebody asks me, what part of the States are you? <laughs> uh, mm. But I'm not. I mean, <laughs> I'm just a teacher. <laughs> you know? I mean, where are you from? Mexico City. <laughs> okay, but where do you live? I mean, the last time I went to the United States was to El Paso because I was with a cousin, but that's it. Right. And that was like <laughs> 10 years ago. And they were like, nah. Really? You know, when, you, when a Mexican person gives you this, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that they don't believe you, man. <laughs> Pay attention to that. If, if next time you're with, with a Mexican and you say something, he says, nah. <laughs> like, really, this is style. <laughs> you're going to remember me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a situation that I believe happens everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, this is um, a, a, a phenomenon that I have seen in a lot of places. For example, I have friends from Argentina, mm -hmm. from Venezuela mm -hmm. that are exactly the same. I mean, <clears throat> they feel like they are in a, in a better economical situation. Mm -hmm. And imagine this, you have a lot of money, but you don't have any education about how to treat other people. Right. Forget right. about just something simple and basic, just the way you treat people, respect. Mm -hmm. And they don't learn respect. Mm -hmm. Just respect for the for your neighbor, for right. the person that is, uh, I don't know, trying to make a living selling candies on the street. In Mexico, mm -hmm. you see that a lot. Yeah. And I, um, I saw that when I went to Tijuana. I was about 12 years old. And uh, we was on a trip. We went to L.A., San Diego, and then uh, one whole day we went across the border, went to Tijuana, and um, talking about open market. It's just uh, you know, just a lot of people selling goods, mm -hmm. trying to make yeah. a living. And I, I still don't understand why there's uh, there are still people. And I understand that if it happens in the states, if it happens here in Mexico, and I have seen it in other places in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, the circumstances may be particular from the, the for every country, but the issue is kind of the same. Yeah, you know, right. And um, great point. Of course, as you can see it there in the United States, we can see it here in Mexico. But it's a thing that it's, it, mm -hmm. it's something so simple and basic. Just teach your kid how to treat somebody with respect, no matter mm. anything. I mean, honestly. Uh, Sometimes I don't understand why they treat me different. Why should I treat them differently? What? Just because I have a lighter skin? That's that's pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty dumb. Honestly, right, right. It yeah. Make, it does. I don't know. Doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. You know. 
<laughs> makes no sense to us neither. Uh, you know, <laughs> we all like, in the same. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we understand that. <laughs> yeah, look, we truly understand. We truly understand that. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, and, and, that's, and that's a funny thing. For example, I was the other. Um, I was invited into Vicky's show a couple uh-huh. of times, mm-hmm. and she's the nicest person I've ever met. Right. Probably you. You dealt with her too. I mean, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, so she's so charming and in love, and she's so cute and kawaii. I want to hug her. I don't know. <laughs> this thing because she she transpires all these things, but it, she is that like that with everybody. It's like, right. dude, it's not. You see, it's not that hard. And she's like in the complete other side of the world. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, you you might you I'm gonna start calling you the uh, Mexican Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be an English teacher, man. <laughs> I would be making a living in a TV or something. <laughs> hey, guys, make sure you follow me, all right? <laughs> really, but, man, um... 7653. Follow me on Twitter. You will see a lot more of Mexican Robin Williams. That is the cool <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, I was listening to, um, so I listened to the podcast. Um, you know, my, my Spanish is kind of rusty, so I just did some of it, but not all of it. Don't um, worry, don't worry. I gotta work on my Spanish, but um, I, I did enjoy it though. You know, it's a lot oh, thank of you. Really appreciate lot of energy. That. And uh I was listening, I guess you got a couple other people on there too. Actually, it's just my brother and me, and okay. sometimes my daughter is like in the background. She normally okay. she's just like listening to us, like, "Oh, what are these guys talking about?" This <laughs> we were but, talking. I mean, of course, we we warn her because we say, "Okay, some of these topics are not exactly for kids." You okay with that? <laughs> well, and she's like, I, "Do you think I'm that stupid?" I understand. And we're talking about the situation of the only fans, like. First yeah. banning the porn, then unbanning the porn. It was like, yeah. What? And she was like, "Oh my God, what are these guys talking about?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only thing. And um, yeah, she... and that was one of the topics that we were talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. But normally, we like to talk about comic books, movies, right. anime. Is like, pfft, oh, yeah, blows yeah. our minds. Actually, if you can see, or let me let me move a little bit my screen. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my wall right there. Mm-hmm. Anime is going crazy right now. Yeah, I mean, you should see it here in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, 50% of people actually it does, doesn't say only that likes anime, but like it's super into it. I mean, mm-hmm. at least okay. 50% of the people that I talk, mm-hmm. students, uh, people that works with me, uh other podcasters from Latin America, mm-hmm. they're like super in love with it. They're like, whoo, wait until you see. <laughs> I tell them, wait until you see Demon Slayer. Wait until you see Tokyo Revengers. Wait right. until you see, well, My Hero Academia, but I believe that everybody has seen it. That, so that doesn't count. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, it's super cool. We're going to see it. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> everybody gets too crazy, man, yeah. because they're good. And when we talk about comic books, because mm-hmm. – my brother is like a super fan. Normally, he spends like five, uh, I will say that number in dollars, $500 every two weeks in comic books. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of, uh, that's uh, a that's nice a comic book. That's a lot of cash, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's into it a lot. And he was super angry because the things that he, uh, you guys have, for example, HBO Max or Disney Plus mm-hmm. haven't arrived yet to Latin America. And he's like, oh, the hell is wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm yeah. waiting for Batman the animated series. I have a friend in Toronto that said he already watched it. It was super cool. I'm like, ah, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, hey, anim- like, anime's been blowing huge because I'm I'm in a, a wrestling group on Facebook and and uh, they love talking about anime. Uh, mm-hmm. They go crazy for it. You should see. There, there's a bunch of luchadores here in Mexico that mm-hmm. some, some of them they adapt their mask to match the colors of some some anime. anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, dude, it was like, <laughs> for example, the other day I saw one in um, well, the company here is called Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre (CMLL). Mm-hmm. It's like the traditional one. Mm-hmm. And there was a guy called Valiente, but mm-hmm. he comes out with a mask of Naruto. 
Yeah. <laughs> and the colors and the details and the images. And he started to do this and he started to do the, the hand the jutsu hand stuff. And everybody was like, oh! <laughs> everybody was start just flipping, man. It was like okay, the arena was for ten thousand people, it was one thousand person, but it still it was like and everybody was <laughs> you can see it even even they were wearing masks. Yeah. Because normally when you're wearing a mask, let me see if I can uh, show you guys. Okay, I'm going to use this one. And do this. And then you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you notice that the guys were impressed. <laughs> and the eyes. <laughs> so talk a little bit about your podcast, Miguel. Yes, of course. Oh. Um, actually, doing this podcast, we... We have done it for a while. Okay. Actually, when we um, when we were able to put it on the on the biggest networks mm -hmm. or the the, um, the providers, you know, Apple, right, uh, iHeartRadio and stuff, we mm -hmm. were super excited because we said it was just a um, it was just something we started to do because we're super fans in general of this uh, this nerd geek culture. I don't know how to call it, but we're super <laughs> fans. We're like super into it. Right. Right. right? And um. Yeah, we just started to listen to our stuff, and what are we, normally every week, uh, every Saturday, we record two shows. The right. ones we talk about, like the most uh, relevant news. Mm -hmm. Another, we talk about some stuff. Actually, um, the last show that we posted was about the situation about having all of these stream services: Netflix, Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. uh, HBO, Disney Plus, now Paramount Plus here in Mexico. Right. Imagine we don't we don't have Hulu, but still. I mean, <laughs> and, uh, and we were talking. Imagine how much money we're gonna pay. Yes, but you have all these things. Yes, but this was. <laughs> It was like watching. Uh, it was like listening, speeding on silence, like speaking about that stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and we get into it too much, and we sometimes we just we just love to talk about it so much that we get lost into it. Yeah. So, and actually, we had to put a timer in front of us, like <laughs> saying, "Okay, dudes, remember that you said ten minutes." You are 15 now, like, right. oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> we went a little bit too hard on that one. It sounds oh, similar to our show. Awesome. We we do it. We do it. <laughs> we, you know what, we do it all the time. Oh, yeah. That's the best part, man. Right. It's really the best part pause, because that, that way you know that you're enjoying it. And and I, I always believe that doing the podcast, doing a uh, – or having – just becoming a, a content creator – Mm -hmm. it's something that you have to do because you really want to talk about it yeah right, like really, right. You, or maybe you just want to hang out with some friends uh i have a um a friend from peru mm -hmm. he has a show too saludos george um that he um he just likes to talk about music in general but he gets lost in it and <laughs> so, and imagine this Latin American rock music is like okay. something super big in the whole part of this continent. Mm. And we get lost into it. Like, oh, yes. And remember, this <laughs> Sola Stereo band from Argentina, blah, 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 blah. And then you, you listen to the SpongeBob Sponge. 30 minutes later. And, and everybody's like, oh, I remember this guy. We're playing in the River Plate Stadium. And everybody was like, where am I at? <laughs> and again, a couple of hours later, <laughs> yes, I remember the comeback story, like going into Estadio Azteca and then going back to the Boca Juniors and then going back to Mar del Plata and then going back to. The... It was like, dude, it's. And the other day we were on the show. I was like, hey, dude, we're cool and stuff and whatever, but it's. I don't know what time is it there in Lima, but it's twelve here, and I gotta wake up tomorrow so early, so I think we have to call it off. And he was like, <laughs> Oh yes, I have to work tomorrow too. You know, we just get lost into it, and that's one of the coolest things about doing this. You know, it's the um, passion. It's, oh yeah, it's, oh yeah, and, oh, yeah. and, and, and so much into it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. it, it and, happens to us literally all the time. We all can, the time. we and can. The best part is sharing it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's <laughs> yeah, that's the best sports. part. Right. Um, um. So, so talk about a little bit uh, of your love for for sports. Uh, what other sports besides the uh, the Denver Broncos that you love down there, Miguel? Well, actually, uh, I'm a big football fan, but I'm not talking about soccer. 
Uh, actually, oh. I'm a one of, okay. I am one of the fewest persons in Mexico you, that you're going to hear say that I am not into that so much. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I have a favorite team. Yes, I have one, but because it's the the one that represents my college, uh, it's called mm -hmm. Pumas of okay. Vietnam, which stands for Cougars. And okay. uh, it's it's from the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. They call it here Nam. It's mm -hmm. a professional team, even though it represents a school. Okay. And since I studied there, I said, well, if we have it right here. Everybody, everybody in Mexico eventually is going to ask you, who do you root for? Who do you root for? Who do you root for? Uh, Pumas. <laughs> And see, but they didn't see my face like Pumas, cabrón, abuelo, or something like that. And like <laughs> getting too excited about it. It's like, ah, uh, and uh, nothing. <laughs> you know, but they expecting you to be so passionate about it. Yeah, no, but wait until they start start talking about the NFL or the Broncos in general. That's when I get crazy. Yeah, because uh, actually, you will not believe it, but there's. Uh, a little bit of football here in Mexico. Yes, of course, not in the same level mm. as you guys have, or maybe Canada. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that it's a little bit closer to our reality, but well. But there's a big, big, big love for football here in Mexico. Really? And the the um, the most popular ones, I believe, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys, yeah. But because oh, nice. of the because of the sixty seventies, no, the seventies okay. actually. Yeah. That's okay. when it exploded in Mexico. Okay. And um, those were the two teams, like on the top of the world, mm -hmm. and everybody started like ah. And then the 49ers and the Dolphins and the Giants and the Redskins with the okay. 80s. Right. Yeah. And everybody starts asking me, and why do you choose the Broncos? <laughs> Actually, there's a funny story about it. The only time that the Broncos came to Mexico, it was it was a preseason game, but here in Mexico, it was like, oh, boy, they are coming here. John Alloway was still playing, but it was a year when they introduced a new uniform, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. New uniform, so you right. can imagine. <laughs> but it was like a sensation because it was like John Elway and Dan Marino in Mexico City one-on-one. -on -one. It was the preseason. <laughs> we all of a sudden like one quarter, but it didn't matter because they were here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just like the way they were looking at uh, the new uniforms of the Broncos look so good in that moment that I just fell in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> And then that year they win the Super Bowl, and then the next year they win the Super Bowl, and John Elway was like almost Jesus come back on earth or something like that. At least at that time, so I said, "Oh, this is it. That's me. <laughs> That's me." And ever since, I've uh, been a Denver Broncos fan. Actually, I, I just buy the NFL pass or you know where you get mm -hmm. all the season. Yeah, just right. to watch the Broncos game yeah. because right. the Sunday ticket. Just yeah, yeah. That's here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to watch all the games on cable. Very difficult because you have only the options of ESPN and Fox Sports. Mm -hmm. You okay. don't have anything else because, well, the national TV eh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of sucks. <laughs> Honestly, sucks. But and so I said, you know what? Sunday ticket. What the hell? Yeah. And I just watch it because I know that I. It doesn't matter that the Chiefs are going to kick our asses all the time. It really doesn't matter. As long as I can see it, I'm happy. I can live with it. I know that our times when, when Peyton Manning was re uh, retired and Von Miller got injured, that's when I said, oh, man, reconstruction is going to be so hard. <laughs> At least you, you know it. <laughs> right, right, right. And then I watch a guy like Patrick Mahomes winning a Super Bowl, and you're like, Man, rebuilding is going to be super hot right now, man. <laughs> man yeah. and we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that me the last three or four seasons. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's, well, well, I mean, you know, I, I'm not to brag, but, you know, right, I don't have to worry go. about that. Oh, don't here worry. I can go. take it. I can take heat. I mean, hey, 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 Miguel, don't feel bad. Uh, Mel is a, a Lions fan, so he has it worse than you. Oh boy! Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm you know it's bad when on the other side of the wall they know the Lions is trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I thought this new coach is going to be good. But well, I always say the same about every new coach that comes to Denver, and look what happened. So I kind of understand, man. 
<laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just like you said, rebuilding is going to be a long process. <laughs> it's going to be a long process. It's a twenty year process. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, almost thirty. Y'all almost reaching thirty, bro. Y'all reaching almost thirty years oh uh, God, of rebuilding. So far, right now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, Miguel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but no. Uh, um, uh, one more time. Uh, go ahead and give our audience the name of your podcast. Um, uh, just one more time. And, and any other uh, uh, theme projects that you got that you want to go ahead and plug. All right. Thank you so much. It's uh, you can look for it in Apple, in Amazon, Spotify, Google Podcast as Pam El Podcast. Pam P A M. We wanted to make it look like Pam El Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how we wanted to put it on the image. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. So you can look for us there. You can also uh, look for every time we post uh, an episode. It's on Facebook and YouTube as Pam El Podcast. Okay. And also we try to, well, we're starting. So you may not see a lot of us in Instagram and Twitter as Pam. Uh, what is the name of the lowered line that you put there? I forgot. Underscore. Ah, uh, yes, Pam underscore podcast on Twitter and Instagram. You can look for us there. And if you want to learn Spanish, just come up with your man Plus Education Mexico. You can look for us on Instagram and on Facebook. Dope, I, mean, dope. I might look it up myself. I'll learn yeah. Spanish. All right, please, please give me, uh, please contact me, man. Yeah, we're gonna Not hook here. you up. We're gonna hook you up real good. I can no. promise you that. <laughs> you're you're going to learn the Mexican double sense, man. You're going to learn. <laughs> like, for example, hey, see, careful with the pepper. What pepper? This pepper. <laughs> Miguel, it's been great, man. It's been fun. Uh, uh, man, we wish you all the success with your podcast and, and your, and your uh, teachings of Spanish and English. Thank you. And uh, look, we wish you all the best, man. It's been great. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for, you, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the chance. Uh, it's great to have uh, to be here, guys. If, if you can invite me a couple of more times, please do. Of course, it, right? of course. I will be more than happy. Hey, hey, hey matter, matter of fact, we'll get you on one of we'll get you on one of our sports show because we do a sports podcast. Right, right. All right, you can. We try to get actually, to the, we try to get to the Mexican market, you, and I have listened to it a couple of times. Man, I have fun with you guys. <laughs> I really do. I love it, man. Yeah, we're gonna bring you on, man. Yeah, we're gonna bring you on the show, and we're gonna talk some football this season. Thank you. That's that would be awesome, man. Oh boy, I really want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miguel, be good. Right, Miguel, have a good one, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> There y'all have it. There y'all have it. Mr. Right, right. Miguel Flores. Y'all definitely go support um, his uh, adventures he got going on with his uh, podcast. Right, and right, right. if you want to go learn some Spanish, I think me and Mel going to hit him up because, you know, um, I, I want to make sure that I'm I'm ordering my food right when I'm at uh, our little Mexican restaurant around the corner. I just trying you to know. get the females. See, see, sir. I, Come on, we, tell you I'm a baby. Come on, tell <laughs> <laughs> see, see you <laughs> trying to cut up, sir. Uh, um, uh, no, uh, look, look, to, uh, look, look, look. On that note, it? everybody, going over to the website <laughs> www.ioff1119.com. Again, show us some love on the Patreon if you feel in in the in the, in this you know given mood. Um, right. Check out uh, the place. Given. No, sir. Uh, no. No, no, no. no. You, uh, go, <laughs> also on the website, the merch is on there. But I often want to podcast, of course, our, our sports uh, page, ILW. We got some merch on there. And, of course, you see uh, Detroit Mail rocking some at J. Edwin right, Collection. Right. All that's on there as well. And then most importantly, go download the app. The ILW Network app is available in all uh, uh, stores. For you know your Google Android users, send the Google Play Store, Apple iOS users in the Apple Store. Go All get right. the app. But it's been great, great show with Miguel. We're gonna have him on the. Uh, uh, we're gonna try to definitely talk some football with him. All but right. look, God willing, it's been great. Until the next episode of I Off the Wonder, it's your boy Walcomar, Detroit Mail, signing off. Peace. Peace.